I'm Julian Halcox, I'm Professor of Cardiology at Swansea University Medical School. I'm a clinical cardiologist with an interest in cardiac disease prevention. I think the PCSK9 story is really, really interesting. At its root, it came from the observation that a, a small protein, pro-protein co convertase subtilizing kexin type 9, PCSK9, was associated with an influence on uh, LDL receptor biology and also circulating levels of LDL. So individuals who have genetic variations that uh, produce more or less of the PCSK9 have different levels of, of circulating LDL. So the PCSK9 is uh, this little uh, protein that targets the LDL receptor. And when this is internalized, uh, when it's bound to, to LDL into the liver cell, the, uh, the, the, uh, the vesicle that has the, uh, the uh, PCSK9 tagged LDL receptor, LDL complex, is going to be broken down and turned over and there'll be less the LDL receptor to be recycled to the surface. So when there's lower levels of PCSK9, there's less internal degradation of the LDL receptor, which means that there are more of these receptors recycled to the surface for further clearance of LDL. So these ge genetic variations that led to differential uh, LDL levels due to the uh, differential uh, levels of PCSK9 were associated with substantially different cardiovascular outcomes, with the individuals with the PCSK9 variations that were associated with the lower LDL cholesterol over the course of the individual's life, with a much, much lower uh, incidence of myocardial infarction. So if genetic variations in this could actually make a difference, the question is clearly, can we do something to expression or at levels of, of this PCSK9 that might actually reduce LDL receptor turnover and lead to lower uh, levels of LDL through enhanced LDL receptor mediated clearance and hopefully translate into better outcomes. Now there have been a few agents that have been developed and three are fairly in fairly advanced stages of, of clinical development having gone through phase 3A studies and now into phase 3B <coughs> which uh, have shown that there are quite substantial uh, benefits on, on LDL levels. Now these agents are monoclonal antibodies that target PCSK9 and rather than with the genetic variation they produce less, they actually target the PCSK9 and stop it binding to the LDL receptor. So when there's less of this PCSK9 receptor interaction, the LDL, LDL receptor lifespan is far greater, it can be recycled and uh, taken back to the surface, it, it's, uh, its retention is greater and has a greater effect on LDL levels. Now the, at the doses that have been studied, we can see fairly dramatic effects on LDL cholesterol levels, which go down by about 50 to 60% at the doses that have been studied. And there have been relatively short-term uh, phase 3A studies at one year, 18 months, in high-risk groups, so familial hypercholesterolemia and individuals at high cardiovascular risk whose LDL levels are still high despite maximal tolerated doses of statins with fairly consistent benefits on LDL. But what was really interesting from the pooled analysis of these data, both from the, uh, the Amgen agent, Evolocumab, and the Sanofi uh, Regeneron agent, Alirocumab, that over the course of one year, these dramatic reductions in LDL seem to be associated with dramatic reductions in cardiovascular events, even within that very short time frame. Now, of course, there's only a few thousand patients being studied for a year, 18 months, so it's a little bit early to get too excited into to expect that these are agents that are ready for use in all of our high-risk patients who aren't at target despite statin therapy. But it certainly is a very exciting uh, initial observation and one would hope that this translates into significant benefits in the long-term studies. So I think at present, these uh, two of these agents are now licensed, alirocumab and evolocumab and uh, NICE is going through the appraisal process to see whether this is something that's going to be cost effective for, for use and uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly where they come down but um, I think certainly for these very high risk patients who have very high levels of, of LDL despite maximally available uh, treatment have a very high lifetime risk of cardiovascular disease specifically these uh, FH patients I think there's even now there's a call for use of these agents in our routine practice.